user experience and user interface need to be seamless. Um, you know, technology exists to make our lives more simple. This is Velocitize Talks. I'm Andy North, and I'm joined today by Jared Mursky, CEO at Wick and Mortar. Jared, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So I'm excited to hear about Wick and Mortar. What are some of the things you guys are working on? Well, first I'll start by telling you a little bit about what Wick and Mortar is. Sure. Um, we were the very first cannabis-focused branding and marketing firm uh, in the world. So uh, you know, it was a really interesting time. You know, ten and a half years ago, you know, there weren't really any companies trying to brand themselves, but really remain as discreet as possible, <laughs> primarily because it was still a bit of an illegal market. Um, so it's been really interesting to watch brands as they've transcended out of the shadows and into the light, so to speak, and um, you know, really find themselves. And more importantly, develop the company culture that I think everyone has really wanted to. Um, but again, kind of circling back, you know, Wick and Mortar, Branding and marketing agency. Um, we do uh, you know, video production as well, uh, product photography, um, you know, experiential marketing, um, you know, digital marketing. Uh, really, the whole gamut. We're just a hybrid agency. So, tell us about the cannabis industry and as it has started to mature, uh, how digital marketers have got, like yourself, have gotten involved with it. Imagine you're a dispensary and um, you want to find a way to. Uh, generate a following via Facebook, as an example, um, of people who are within the local area of perhaps where your dispenser is going to be, right? Well, typically, like any brick and mortar store, you could just create articles and boost posts and segment those articles in specific areas, thus generating a following from people within your area. Well, unfortunately, dispensaries aren't allowed to do that. So a tactic that we have used is making the dispensary look as if it's a digital publication initially, six months to a year before the place opens, but focus all of our digital marketing efforts on geofencing people from Facebook via articles, boosting posts to a page. And then once they uh, you know, want to announce that they're a dispensary, we flip the switch and yes, they won't be able to advertise or boost posts anymore, but hell, we just attracted perhaps a quarter million followers in a six month window of people that live perhaps within two miles from my dispensary. How do you see the cannabis industry continuing to evolve? That's a very broad question because there, quite frankly, are so many areas of evolution in seed to cell tracking, um, testing labs, the science, the cannabinoid discoveries. Um, I mean, I have a company called Melix uh, that I have some partners with and you know, what we're doing there is just pretty miraculous. I mean, we've got the first DNA test kit going through clinical trials that can test your genetic markers to determine which terpene profiles make the most sense based on your genetic makeup. So we can literally tell you, you know, what strains are going to uh, remedy the best results specific to your endocannabinoid system, because everyone reacts to strain specificity differently. Um, but then you've got uh, you know, companies that are identifying themselves as a CBD company, right? We are CBD this, or we are this CBD, right? Well, I'm trying to do the best that I can to steer people away from identifying themselves as a CBD only company, primarily because CBD is just one cannabinoid of many, right? And given the fact that CBG and CBN can be amplified with other ingredients, uh, thus creating some really powerful medicinal effects. You know, knowing that these formulations are going to uh, play an integral role in the, the product and future products that this parent company produces, you can double down on brand equity and build more value in the ingredient and in the overall parent company as a whole. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's fascinating. So, and it's like, uh, and it's the same like with, uh, you know, Tiffany's, they with their Tiffany's Blue or Sonic branding. So there are a lot of brand hacks. You've mentioned before that a good story should lie at the heart of every brand. Uh, what are the key rules for telling that good story? How do you get that story where it needs to be? Well, the first step that we take in, you know, any discovery or branding process for that matter is the creative brief. And that's where we go through a series of 
in-depth questions tailored to your business that ultimately help us better understand and solidify the creative direction moving forward. So it's at that point that we ask those questions and, and we extrapolate that information that ultimately guide the creative decisions that we make. And so once we have that, then the next step is we, we craft the tone of voice, right? And the tone of voice doesn't just appear out of nowhere. And honestly, this is oftentimes the step missed by most building companies. Um, but this is the, the biggest piece as you start to develop your strategy and, and really awareness of who you are and who you wanna become. Because if you want to be a funny company, but you sound serious, well, that's kind of contradictory, right? So what we do when we go through this step is we create three to five brand directional mood boards that consist of imagery designed and curated to convey those specific emotions and feelings. Some of it's texture related and, you know, there might be pictures of a, a female with no makeup on and she just looks very raw and just, you know, um, just honest and real. And, and that's not meant to be implied as far as what we see the brand looking like, but again, feeling like, right? Um, so we want to pull the truth from the imagery and, and see what we can do to develop, again, the mood and the feeling. What has been the biggest change in developing an effective online presence for your customers over the past three to five years? Branding is one of them. And, and really, depending on what kind of company they are, um, you know, the web development side, you know, we are big in web dev. And, uh, you know, if you're an online business, that is your company. Right. So um, user experience and user interface need to be seamless. Um, you know, technology exists to make our lives more simple, which is why WP Engine exists. Right. Um, because, you know, with services like that, when they work with clients like ours, it only helps us ensure that their websites are running at lightning speed. And, and, and since, you know, Google's alder algorithm rather, um, you know, ranks websites higher based on site speed as a um, as one form of measurement. Um, you know, it's important that uh, you know what we're building is you know seamless from you know the agency end into the client side. Where do you see digital marketing evolving? You're obviously at the cutting edge in some areas. Mm -hmm. What's next for digital marketing? You know, right now we're doing some really cool augmented reality stuff. Um, you know, I've got a company also called Whirl, um, where we're doing, uh, it's a free rideshare app. And we've partnered with Uber. And so you can download the app and you can watch ads and fill out surveys and um, earn credits to get free rides. Now for college kids, that's great. And for cannabis companies, it's even greater. Because these, our customers with Whirl can essentially log in through... Um, Facebook, and now we've been able to capture some of their some of their data um, for the right reasons, because we want to serve them ads based on age range and age specifics and based on geo geofencing. So, if we know that you're interested in uh, cannabis culture, you're over the age of 21, and you're within perhaps two miles of you know one of my dispensaries, um, well, then you're going to receive an ad then on your phone for a survey or for maybe it's a, a sweepstakes or maybe it's a, hey, come spend $20 with us and get a free ride. How do you counsel your clients to work with social as a, as a paid element, as a community element, uh, as something entirely different? Well, it really depends. So there's, going back to your last question and kind of tailoring into this one, you know, for cultivators, just as an example, um, one thing that many of them have done as well as we have, you know, helped our clients kind of usher into is, you know, creating a clothing line, right? Because they can digitally market that. They can't, you know, geo-target, geo-fence. They can't do really any of the things that most companies could in typical retail or, you know, CPG. Um, and they, they, they can't drive traffic to those products. So they can create a, a separate sub subdomain clothing line, and then they can do pay-per-click advertising, drive traffic to that, and steer that then to their root site. Now back on social media, you can also use then social media to sell that, drive traffic to the website, and keep people coming back. 
Uh, one of the things we ask all our guests is, is there a favorite book, a blog, or a podcast that you'd like to share with our viewers? I, I really like the like switch. Okay. I thought it was really interesting. I'm a huge fan of emotional intelligence. And so I'm, I, I get really fascinated by communication. And I think because branding and marketing is such a huge communication tool for companies, I like learning the psychology behind why people buy, by body language. I mean, because sales and marketing isn't two dimensional. It's very much face to face, just as much as it's digital. So I really love, I, I just really love, I'm just fascinated by that. The like switch. Yeah, the like switch, yeah. Sounds, sounds interesting. Um, and then what was the other one? There was, a, you said book, podcast. Blog or podcast. Blog. Check out the Wick and Mortar blog. Lots of good information on there. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Velocitized Talks. My guest today has been Jared Mursky, CEO of Wick and Mortar. Jared, it's been fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. You can find me uh, on Instagram at jared.mursky. I'm also on Facebook and pretty much everywhere else. So uh, LinkedIn, even more so. So find me on there. <laughs>